MMORPG New World shows signs of life. Recently, the developers announced the first paid expansion, which promises to add mounts, revamped gear progression system, new weapons, player-driven open-world PvP based on the player feedback, and much more. Today, in our video, let's take a look back at this once highly promising MMORPG. What has changed over time? What will be added in the near future? And determine if it's worth returning to the game or not. After all, you never know what surprises await, right? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because, you know, support me, guys. I love you. My name is PLK. This is your best MMORPG channel. And let's go. For those who are not familiar, New World is an MMORPG by Amazon Game Studios, which started several years ago as a sandbox survival game like Conan Exiles, but perhaps more hardcore with open world PvP, Pacho item drop, and all those delights, you know. However, during development, the developers realized that it would be much more interesting to make an MMORPG and in the process they effectively killed open-world PvP, making the game essential PvE oriented, which caused a storm of outrage within the community. Then the game was delayed several times until it was finally released at September 28, 2021. The joy, however, was short-lived, as the developers somehow forgot to inform players that each server could only accommodate 2,000 people, and the guilds that were trying to get into specific servers were stuck in hours-long queues. Additionally, the overall bugginess of the game and the lack of high-end content prevent players from fully enjoying the game after the release. Myself, I was playing till the almost end game and I was so bored after that, so I dropped the game. And the majority of players left the project just a couple of months later. Some completely give up on New World forever, while others were willing to give the game a second chance. But much later, when everything would be back on track, the opportunity presented itself in November 2022, when the developers decided to launch so-called fresh start servers. This service allowed players to start the game from the scratch, and transfers from classic servers were not possible. As an added interest, a new location and various other minor additions were introduced to the game. It seems like it was finally possible to play a full-fledged MMORPG. And indeed, the dwelling online player's count of New World skyrocketed to near 138,000 users at its peak. Of course, this does not compare to the release figure about 913,000 users, but it gave the developers a real chance to fix the things. And I can say with the full responsibility that they did not take advantage of that chance. Uh... Despite the added content, the overall amount of hired activities still left much to be desired. And the old issues, some of which continue to plug the game to this day, did not disappear and continued to significantly impact the overall experience. The lack of high-end PvP in particular was disheartening. An expertise system, or lack thereof, left players without much motivation to play. Plus or minus, during this time, I completely quit the game. I played in all the closed and open alphas, starting from the very first one when the game was still a survival game. I genuinely liked the game and wanted as many players as possible to know about it. After some time trying to understand the game, trying to understand the developers and trying to understand the roadmap of the game, I completely lost it. But of course, I ended up on the fresh start servers, leveled up my character as part of the guild, and after a month or two I gave up on the game one more time. To me, it still didn't offer much to do, but that doesn't mean that project stopped its development. Over the past year, the game has received a whole bunch of so-called expeditions, which are similar to the dungeons. A gear set storage system with the ability to quick switch sets, numerous traditional events, the first series raid, changes in the format of updates, now the game receives seasonal updates with the battle passes, and more. All of this is accompanied by story improvement and other pleasant details. Quite recently, the transmogrification system was added to the new world, allowing players to greatly diversify the appearance of their characters. And just recently, with a great enthusiasm, the first paid expansion was announced. Yes, the game is still buy to play, and the developers have been trying to monetize it through cosmetics and more recently battle passes. I'm not sure if they are making enough money to put bread on the table, but I'm pretty sure that the game is genuinely unprofitable. Nevertheless, it's Amazon, right? And they have money, so it's cheaper for them to keep an unprofitable project on the balance sheet than to incur reputational losses. And just as a reminder, 
New World is the first and currently only success of Amazon games in the gaming industry. I mean, success, right? So they're sticking with it. So what's up with this first paid expansion? Rise of the Angry Earth. Actually, it looks quite interesting. I will be honest with you, regardless of how you feel about the game. First and foremost, there are mounts, boys. Yes, now the game will have rideable animals that can be summoned for the faster travel across that terrain, which means the zones will be bigger or we will be faster or like what the means of the, you know, why we have mounts right now. Some might say that the island is already small enough and mounts are not needed, but you know, I can disagree. Nobody likes running around and there is still plenty of running to do in the new world. As far as I understand, mounts will include classical horses as well as more unique options like wolves and lions. Each animal will have unique appearance and customizable equipment. And for those who prefer peaceful activities, a new profession called riding trade skill will be available. Through this profession, players can increase mount speed, gain certain positive effects and improve the quality of mount consumed food. Of course, all of this mount stuff will happen alongside a new story. Introducing First Light Pal. If you're not aware, First Light is a settlement that, if memory serves me right, was recently closed for reworking. So, once upon a time, these fields were a welcoming place for eternal newcomers, but now they have been devastated by the wrath of the Angry Earth, one of the NPC factions in the game. No one knows for sure what happened to the people who once inhabited this area and the deadly barrier keeps everyone, except the most fearless, from the attempting to find out. And of course, we are those, you know, fearless ones. Apparently some beastmasters have awakened there new enemies with whom we will have to fight. And as a main antagonist, it seems like someone named Artemida is involved. Along with that, players can expect level increase across the board, leveling up to level 65, gear level up to 700, currently it's 625, trade skills up to level 250 and new faction levels will be introduced along with the new gear and items. There will also be the ability to upgrade equipment through a new feature called artifacts. Players will need to complete a series of quests to unlock the full potential of the artifact, unlocking six perks, including one unique perk that will define your playstyle. As for new weapons in the update, Chain is featured. It is versatile, one-handed weapon, which can be used in combination with a shield. From what I understand, the Chain will combine the ability to deal melee damage, buff allies and debuff enemies. In other words, it seems like support class will be introduced to the game capable of both healing and dishing out damage. I should remind you that in New World, your class depends on the weapons that you use. Oh, by the way, the first light zone will be transformed into the Elysian Wilds. It is there that players will have to battle the Beastmasters and Artemida. The location looks, I mean, quite impressive. Of course, it wouldn't be complete without any new expedition or dungeon. In this case, it's the Savage Divine, designed for players level 62 and above. There will also be a new hard mod variant called Primal Fury, which will allow players to temporarily gain the power of a beast and perform light and heavy attacks without the weapons. It will be a real powerhouse even for the melee fighters. Additionally, to coincide with the magic update, the third season will begin. It will include a battle pass, activity cards, new trials and rewards. The battle pass, by the way, if anyone interested, is a traditional battle pass with a boss free and paid version for the pay to play game with the cosmetics. I mean, come on guys. Also, and this, in my opinion, is more important than all these mounts and new weapons. The developer seems to have decided to reevaluate their approach to the outpost rush and open world PvP. Now, to declare the war, players will need to participate in influence tower capture and clashes with opposing factions in the open world. To explain further, each faction will compete for influence in a specific zone at set times. If the attacking factions earn enough influence through the PvP missions, influence tower and the forts before the end of the race, they will receive bonus rewards and ability to declare the war. If the defending factions prevents the attackers from gaining enough influence within the specific time, they will receive additional reward in both of the influence race and the next war. Regardless of who wins, the attacking factions with the highest influence will be able to escalate the conflict into the war. 
a bit complicated, but I will tell you, it is more interesting than it is right now. So it's good. In general, all of this, in my opinion, looks like a pretty good move to revive the dead body known as of open world PvP in the game. Another very promising addition is the complete removal of the ward, bane and resilience perks. And most importantly, the expertise system altogether. Yes. Based on the player's feedback, the bane perks, ward perks, resilience perks and the expertise system will be completely removed from the game. I mean, you can shit on this game, whatever you want, you can shit on Amazon games, whatever you want, but they changed so huge part of the previous development of the game. I mean, that's something, right? As a compensation, Bane will receive an increase and in base damage for magical and ranged weapon in PvE to make them a more viable alternative to melee and combat against multiple enemies. As for ward, changes will be made to the AI and combat actions to account for the removal of their defensive and offensive advantages. To compensate for silence, there will be a reduction in critical strike for all players based in their armor weight. Light armor will have a 15% reduction, medium armor 20% and heavy armor 25%. Existing items with this perk will receive a health perk instead which increased the player's health by a certain percentage of their base health. As for the expertise, from what I understand, after its removal, players will simply be able to loot creature gear and weapon based on their level and difficulty. That's all. At the same time, the drop rate will be adjusted to favor rare but more useful loot. In reality, there are many more changes. They will also affect crafting, allowing players to craft what they actually want instead of playing the perk lottery. The removal of expertise and everything associated with it is also not worthy because it's not as simple as it seems. Nevertheless, the question of whether it's worth returning to new world remains relevant. Undoubtedly, as I mentioned before, a significant portion of the players have decided to forget about this MMORPG once and for all. But there is a hesitant part that is not against returning if there is a reason. I personally belong to the second group, so I will say this. Much of what I announced in the first paid expansion of the new world seemed worth it of attention and promising to me. The removal of expertise and the attempt of revive open world PvP are undoubtedly at the top of this list, so personally, I will be interested in returning and seeing how it all plays out by myself. Of course, I'm not trying to persuade anyone to do the same, but you know, decide by yourself check my streams and check my videos, because we will play this game, right? The release of the first expansion, Rise of the Angry Earth, will take place on October 3rd, 2023. It will cost 30 bucks, but the original price will likely be slightly cheaper. As always, don't forget to like or dislike this video, share with your friends, you know, leave your comment. I was really happy to see you guys, thank you for your time, and I will see you next one. Bye!